Welcome to our 2x03 tutorials. Uh, this tutorial is about calculating a consumer producer slash total surplus. Uh, this is actually the first tutorial I've ever made using this software and this device, so this is probably going to be a step back in terms of quality. Um, the content, however, will be the same that you're used to. Okay, so right, this is going to be calculating. surplus. Right? Now this is going to be one of the most important things you learn how to do in this class because it will follow you throughout the rest of economics, uh, which will, if you wind up in economics as a career or even if you wind up in business, might wind up being something important for the rest of your life, unlike most of the stuff you may learn in university. So anyways, I'm going to make up a market here where the quantity demanded is 100 minus 5 times the price. The quantity supplied is just 15 times the price. Okay. Now we should already be somewhat familiar with calculating a uh, competitive equilibrium uh, from the last tutorial that I haven't made yet but I'm referencing anyways, uh, where we set quantity supply equal to quantity demanded and we determine a price from that. Okay, So we're going to set 100 minus 5p equal to 15 times p. Right, basic algebra, we'll bring the 5 over to this side. And we'll have 100 equals 20p, which of course means that p is equal to 5. All right, so we can plot that point in here somewhere. Uh, let's just call this competitive equilibrium. Okay, so p equals 5, right? And with this p equals 5, we can plug that into either one of these equations because we have no distortions, right? So q is going to equal 100 minus 5 times our price that we determined, which is 5, which is going to be 75. Okay, so I can bring this line down here and this becomes 75. Okay, so that's our competitive equilibrium. All right. Now let's actually draw the lines in because that'll be helpful to show what exactly a surplus is. Okay, so if we're going to do that, we need to make what's called inverse market demand, which is what you're used to seeing where price is a function of the quantity and not the other way around. Okay? So I'm going to start with the easy one, which is the quantity supplied. So QS equals 15p. All right. Well, I want p by itself, so I'm just going to divide both sides by 15. 1 over 15 qs is equal to p. All right. I'm going to do the same thing for quantity demanded. It's going to be a little bit different. So we have 100 minus 5p equals q. So subtracting the 5p from this side, and then we're going to add the qd into the other side, or backwards. So I'm going to have 100 minus q equals 5p. Okay. And then I'm just going to divide through by the 5, which leaves me 20 minus 1 over 5q equals p. Okay. Now I can draw lines based on that, right? So this is the demand equation. And this then is the supply equation. Okay, well, as you're probably familiar with, the supply curve should be upward sloping, the demand curve should be downward sloping for any example that you're gonna see. So we're gonna draw an upward sloping supply curve, remembering that it has to go through that equilibrium point, okay? We're going to draw a downward sloping demand curve, remembering that it also has to go through that point, but also remembering that even though they don't look at look like it, if we use our imagination, these are straight lines, they're linear equations. So for the rest of the tutorial, if you just pretend these are straight, I would be much obliged. All right, now a surplus is going to be, you can think of it like a profit, right? So for a consumer surplus, which will be the first one we'll do, 
It's the area underneath the demand curve, but above the price. So I'm highlighting it in right now with these little lines. Okay. So let's think about a consumer surplus this way. Let's suppose I was willing to pay $10 for whatever widget this is in this market, but instead I see a market price of $5. Well, I have $5 left over that I would have spent, but didn't have to, right? So I'm happy with that $5. I have $5, we'd say, of consumer surplus. Okay, so let's calculate this area for the whole demand curve, right? If we remember that this is a straight line, as I've mentioned, then we're looking for the area of a triangle. And this is a formula you probably learned in grade eight and may have forgotten, but it's basically the base times the height divided by two. Okay, so we need to find out that height. We need to find that base that comes down and touches the edge of this triangle here. All right, so this will be our base. This will be our height. We'll multiply those two together, divide by two, and we'll have the area of our triangle, okay? So the base should be fairly self-evident, right? We're starting at the origin, right? Zero comma zero. And our quantity ends at 75 units. So the base is clearly 75. So I'll just write that down here so we can come back to it later. Okay. Now we need to work out what the height is. Now the height isn't as obvious because we're looking for this mysterious y-intercept up here that we don't necessarily know what it is but we can figure it out, right? So we know that the origin is zero, zero, but we wanna know what this point is. So if we look at this, the equation for this line, right, which we remember is the demand line, 20 minus one over five Q equals P, well, we can see here that Q must equal zero. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in zero for Q and P becomes 20. Okay, so I can write in my 20 up here and now the height is merely 20 minus five. Okay, so our area, our consumer surplus, which I will abbreviate CS, which is fairly common in economics, is going to be 75 times 20 minus five, all divided by All right. Sorry, I'm just punching this in on my calculator right now. Okay, so my CS I've calculated to be 562.5. Okay, good start. We have our consumer surplus. Now there's another thing we think about in economics, which is the producer surplus. Okay. So that is the area I'm highlighting in now, where it is above the supply curve, but below the price. And I'm actually gonna check it off just to make absolutely clear that there's a distinction. Okay, so this checkboxed area is the, is the producer surplus. Now we can think of produ producer surplus as profit. We can think of it much the same way that we thought of consumer surplus. So down here, the producer may have been willing to sell this unit for $1.50. Instead, he's getting $5, right? Because we're in a perfectly competitive market. The price is the same to everybody. So this $3.50, that is the price above what he would have been willing to supply it for, is just surplus. It's just extra. It's just profit. So that is what the producer surplus is. And we calculate it much the same way, again, with the area of a triangle. Okay, so for the producer surplus... Right, it again equals base times height over two. And we can use this base again to be 75, it's the same, right? And now we even get the added benefit of since this producer, or sorry, since the supply curve starts at zero, we know that the height is five. So our area is just gonna be 75 times five 
divided by 2. Okay, so the producer surplus is going to be 187.5. And again, just took a second to plug that into my calculator. Okay. Now, let's think about total surplus. Okay, well, total surplus is the joint area of these two curves. Okay, so I'm going to flip over and take a new page, and I will see you on that page. Well, here I am. I'm now looking for total surplus, which will abbreviate TS, and I'm just going to do a quick freehand sketch of my graph again. Not trying to make it look pretty, just trying to get back to where I was. Alright, so we've decided that this price was 5, and that our quantity was 75, and that this intercept was 25. Right? And again, we have price on this axis, quantity on this axis. I may have forgot to label that last time. But now we want to think about the total surplus. Okay, well, using your calculator, you can add the two together. But I'd like to show you, this is 20, not 25. I'd like to show you just how to calculate it without having gone through the steps of making consumer surplus and producer surplus. You can check me and add the two numbers that we just got together and see if it works out to the number I'm about to get now. Okay, so this is still just a triangle, right? So it's still going to be base times height divided by 2, okay? And again, we have the convenience of our y-intercept on the supply curve being 0, so we can just use the height as 20, right? So we're looking for the area of this whole thing I'm shading now, which is the sum of the two smaller areas, okay? So our base now is going to be 20, and our height is going to be 75. Okay, so I'm just going to multiply this out, okay, and I get my total surplus to be 750, which I should have been able to do in my head by dividing the 20 by 2 and multiplying by 10, but I chose to be certain, as you should. So my total surplus is 750, and we've calculated the surplus for this market. Uh, of course, this only applies if there's no market distortions, so you can look for the tutorial video on attacks to look for what would happen in the case of a distortion. That's all for this tutorial.